Hello, everybody. I would like to welcome everybody to the first ever global press conference of Raya and the Last Dragon. I'm Jeannie Mai, and I am so elated to be here. This is a magical experience. I've watched the film twice already just because I wanted to catch all of the details and, and just all of the mystery and the magic within all these cultures coming together in Southeast Asia. So I thank everybody for being here. The first thing I would like to do is of course, introduce our amazing panel of talent talent that made this film possible. So let's kick this off, please, with, we have Mr. Qu we have Queen Nguyen, writer of our Raya and the Last Dragon. Hi, Queen. Hi. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well, excited to be here. Oh my gosh, me too, friend. All right, we have Adele Lim, also our writer. Hi. Hi, Adele, it's good to see you again. It's so good to be here. Osnat Schurer is our producer. Hi. Hi, Osnat. Hi. We have Carlos Lopez Estrada, our director. Hello. <laughs> Good to see you. Don Hall is our director here joining us. Morning. Hey, Don. Hey. Talia Tran is our voice of Little Noi. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, Tommy. Oh, I can't wait. I have so many questions for you. Isaac Wang is the voice of Boone. Hello, everybody. Yes, come oh. through outfit. <laughs> Benedict Wong is our voice of Tong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Benedict, you came underdressed. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, yeah, I just went casual. That was it. <laughs> well, she, this is like an athleisure look, right? Yeah, <laughs> I've got my sweatpants on. You look phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you. Sandra O oh, is the voice of Verona. Where are you at, Sandra? Hi, good morning. <laughs> Benedict, just <laughs> put us all to shame. Stop it, please. <laughs> I've got a horse in the back as well. Uh, oh, I can't wait. Great. Uh, I'll bring it in. Yes. <laughs> All right. And we also have Daniel Day Kim, my friend, as Chief Benja. Hi, buddy. Oh, all right, Daniel. How are you feeling today? Pretty good. I'm, I'm not, Benedict, I'm not only impressed by your wardrobe, but I love the fact that your bathroom tile is actually Raya themed colors. <laughs> Thank you guys. I, uh, it took, uh, I, I spent, I mean, I've got polyfiller in my hands from last <laughs> night, but you know, I'm willing to go the extra mile. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And good to see you, Jeannie. Good to see you too, Daniel. Okay, now it doesn't stop there because we've got Miss Gemma Chan in the house as the voice of Hi guys. Hi Gemma. Hey. Hey, Wonderful to be here. And Aquafina is the voice of Sisu. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Hi Jeannie, I'm a big fan by the way. Oh, You're thank cool. you. Same, sis. Don't even start. Same. We could go um, on. Uh, Benny, you you're killing it right now, and thank uh, you, Daniel, for calling him out that he's in his bathroom. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> keep it real, you know. <laughs> oh my gosh! And we have Kelly Marie Tran, of course, as the voice of Raya, our warrior. Ooh, oh, my oh my gosh! It's so good to see everybody. <laughs> the gang is all here. So I just I, I have to say this is such an exciting film, and especially during this time. Um, it was heartwarming, it was emotional, and it was just so exhilarating to watch the women rise to the top, the tribes that collided and united and came together, the real life situation of what, what happens when you have feuds between different people, land, understandings, misunderstandings, and how you can still bring that together all in the spirit of love. 
I, um, I'm, I'm enthralled by this film and I just can't wait to understand more of why everybody decided to put this together the way they did. And you could just feel the heart and the spirit within everybody. You wanted to see this be as magical as it came out and it really did. So uh, my first question that I have to ask is, first of all, you guys shot this all from home. Let's, I, I, this, this is kind of unbelievable for a Disney production of this quality and this magnitude. So the fact that this film was made from people working in over 400 homes, what was that like for you personally? And I, I wanna start this off with you, Daniel, because I know that you're a man with many hats. And, and, and I mean, just the other day we were hosting Clubhouse together where you were orchestrating, you know, how we can come together and talk about um, Asian lives out there and how to protect our communities. But you're also working on this massive film. So what is it like for you to be the voice of Chief Benja and to do this from home? Uh, it's really great, actually. I, I love the character a lot. I, it's, he's someone that I aspire to be. Uh, so it's, it's nice when you can really take a lot of pride in the person that you're playing. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, it was, it was amazing actually being able to shoot from home because uh, a record from home, because, you know, living in Hawaii, anytime I try and travel to go shoot something, it's at least five hours and sometimes 11 by plane. So uh, to be able to kind of walk downstairs in my t-shirt and shorts was, uh, was pretty great. Uh, although I do, I will have to say, uh, it wasn't without hiccups. Uh, Carlos and I was not and Don and you guys will all attest. Uh, there was one of my very first sessions uh, from home was this big chunk of, you know, most of his dialogue where he's talking about Kumandra and, and is establishing a relationship with Raya. And, you know, we, we put in a good half hour. I said half hour last time, but something tells me it was more than that, wasn't it? Don, it was a, it was a lot yeah, more it was about than an that. hour, I think. A lot more than that? See? Yeah, I think it was an hour. Oh, gosh. Okay. So, anyway, so I recorded for an hour. We did some great stuff. And uh, at the end of the hour, we were supposed to upload our packets to Team Disney. And as I was uploading my packet, I realized that I had recorded none of that past hour. Oh and, my God. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, so this is what happens when you leave the recording and the technical stuff to the actors. Talent, uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we lost that hour, but I learned my lesson and uh, it, it was kind of hassle-free the rest of the way. Wow. And, and what about for you, Benedict? I mean, were you, is this savvy in production when you were shooting from home, when you were recording from home? Uh, actually, I was I was quite fortunate enough to be in um, in Perth, uh, Western Australia, and uh, by that time, uh, I think um, uh, it was about five weeks in, and everything kind of like it was, you know, you, you you were able to kind of go into a studio and record. So I did have that luxury actually. So um, it wasn't, um, uh, I, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't be in my bathroom here now. Uh, recording it if I was at home but uh, yeah I was in the studio. Wow it was very evident that everybody had such a connection with one another. I, I can already imagine how we would traditionally do this obviously in your sound studios but did you guys ever have a meeting together? I know some of you guys know each other obviously but how did you manage to get that camaraderie so that it just felt so connected it felt like you guys were all working within the same room? How do you think that worked out for you, Kelly? Um, honestly, I feel like all the credit has to go to the story team, the editing team, and all of the, the incredible team behind the movie because all of the actors, at least in my experience, we were all sort of isolated and uh, you know, we were recording by ourselves. And I think um, to have seen the movie now totally finished and to see all the chemistry that these incredible characters have, I think that says a lot about just the expertise of Disney animation and that, you know, the, the incredible talent working behind this movie. Um, and also about the cast, obviously. Um, yeah, it's, it was a, an incredible experience. Absolutely. And, and giving that to us, not Car Carlos, we, Don, when you all pulled this team together, how did you select this perfect cast that just brought such, you know, just perfection when it came to the emotion that these characters needed? 
I'm going to go with Disney magic. <laughs> I really think we just got lucky to find, you know, some best actors in the world. And, and they all said, yes. <laughs> we, we've been talking about this in, in our other interviews and, you know, the connection that all of the actors have with the material and with their characters has been so special and seeing how each of them, like we had teary conversations with all of you just about like what the characters and what the story meant to you. And you don't get to see that very often. Just like we, we have a group of people that really believe in this movie and, and what it represents. And I think that just moved us and every single person working on the movie. Uh, it was beautiful. I'll only add that, like, I, I'm very, you know, I think we're all quite aware what this kind of movie like this with heroes that look like this will mean to so many kids and families out there. And to have such a, you know, a, a class group of actors and, and, and to, to be able to be representatives of that to so many kids is so such a, a dream come true for not just us as filmmakers, but just for like, honestly, for the community. Absolutely. And, and that makes me think of you, Isaac, you know, being the youngest here on, on our forum. What was it like to you to see all of these Southeast Asian cultures, you know, brought to life in so many different ways? How did that, and, and obviously with you coming here to represent, I can see with your garb, tell us about what you're wearing and what does this feel like to you to be representing a film that's so necessary today? Yeah, this is, um, this is a, a Pa Young. I think I pronounced that right. Uh, it's a ceremonial Lao traditional accessory that people usually wear to ceremonies and temples. And if you go to Laos, you can actually see people walking around wearing these if it's like a special day or it's a special time for certain someone. And uh, it's pretty crazy to think that all, like just a, 450 people who worked on this movie and they just stuffed a bunch of different cultures into this single movie. It's amazing to see all the things that are included in this movie, including the food, and some of the weapons that you see, for example, the Cali sticks that I saw, which really stood out to me. And there's a bunch of other different things that I can't even name because I don't even know the name of them. Because I'm like, I've been centered around, I think, a couple cultures my whole life. And just to see all these different cultures is really amazing to me. Absolutely. I'm so glad you brought up food because, you know, being here, I'm in DC right now, but just being quarantined, I started looking up Postmates to just find where I could find some Cambodian dishes, some I needed, once you guys asked, do you want stew or rice? I was like, both, please. So how was it for you guys to really, you know, see the details, not just the food, but even the hairstyles, like things that I was like, I want to, I want to bring this back. I didn't even know that this was historically, you know, took place in our culture. What was that like for you, Aquafina? Oh, wow. I mean, uh, I'm going to be honest. I, I, uh, I first saw the first like clip that was put together at, at T23 and I was, uh, I was a little, I was a little confused because I was like, is this a live action movie? And, and let me, let me get my agent on the phone because it looks so realistic, the rain, um, everything. And so that, that, that was uh, confusing, but, but then also, you know, you realize how much deep, like we we're coming in, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, without pants, I, I you know, that, that's optional. When we come in, we do the job, one croc on, you know, and that's, and that's what we're doing. But then you realize like all, all that really goes into this and, and we're recording kind of simultaneously as it's being animated. So when I first saw the human version of Sisu, um, I was like, okay, all right, uh, that's me. I'm like, not even like a show off or anything like that. That it looks like me. And so, you know, those nuances like, uh, yeah, very, very trippy and very, very mind blowing. I hope that whole thing wasn't on mute. Um, I'm going to go back up. Absolutely. I, I also noticed the authenticity behind very Southeast Asian traits. I, I, I love that there was a nod to the respect to elders. I love that, you know, just the sense of community and, and the, the interaction and the, the strength of families, that families prevail no matter what, families before everything. And I, some of these principles are things that people will really pick up, but can also relate to. Talia, when you were, when you were, you know, emulating some of these, these factors, what stood out to you most? What kind of made you remember your culture most, or maybe even from your own upbringing? Yeah, um, 
playing Noi is definitely something that nothing like I've ever done before because she obviously doesn't use English words. She speaks in her own language, but that connection she has with her gang of Ongis and even with that she develops with Tong and Raya and Boon and the whole gang, that sense of camaraderie and that strength within, you know, that group of people and that sense of family, that is definitely something that I related to personally. And I know growing up in, in, in a Vietnamese family, you know, that family always, always comes first, you know, from the traditions to, to just everyday life, you know, family is just such a huge part of it, especially now in quarantine with my family all the time. Um, it's, it's just something that I definitely clicked with me. And I'm like, yes, I know what it feels like. And to, for her to be so young and to have her family turned to stone by the Druid and her to have to kind of raise herself with the Ongis and that sense of strength that she has to develop. I think that's something that's also very common in Southeast Asian families, especially because it's something that is very valued, the sense of independence and I think there's just a lot about Noi that even though she can't speak it into words that people will connect with and ho hopefully, and I definitely connected with. So, yeah. Absolutely. You mentioned your family. Have they seen the film yet? Yes. Um, we, uh, when we did the cast screening night and everything, we were all just blown away by the film when we got to see it in its whole entirety. I remember when I was uh, just filming it up in my parents' closet, I got to see little snippets of it here and there. And I was blown away already then. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so, so magical. And just seeing it all come together and hearing everyone's voices and seeing all the beautiful scenes and hearing all the beautiful words. It just, it means a lot to have a movie like this come out. <laughs> and I'm so grateful to be a part of it. Absolutely. I have one last question, but I just want to remind our wonderful press that are here, and I'm sure they have so many questions. Guys, please know that you have a Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Please make sure that you're submitting your questions because we want to make sure you get your question in. So do take this time to get your question in so that we can screen them and, and, and make sure that you, your voice is heard. I also have a question about the dragons because that's, you know, in my world, I've only seen dragons on Lunar New Year. I've only seen them depicted in one way. You feed them red envelopes and, you know, then you've got, you know, Dungeons and Dragons is the next time that I remember far back when. Game of Thrones, I've seen dragons. But here on Raya and the Last Dragon, there's a very different and unique iteration about what dragons symbolize. So I want to throw this to the writers and the directors. How did you guys come up with that? And, and what was most important to you when you utilize the dragons as symbols for this film? Anybody, Don? Adele, Adele get in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In there, uh, well, a, a couple of things. You know, it was so exciting to be able to uh, celebrate the Eastern Dragon. And we realized that this was something that most of the world was not familiar with. In Southeast Asia, uh, they're referred to as Nagas, they're water deities, and they bring such great auspiciousness. Um, you know, and, and so it's very different from the Western dragon that's like winged and fire breathing, something you have to destroy and take down. And we also love the symbology um, in our movie because Raya thinks she's going to bring forth this water dragon who's going to you know, snap her fingers and just solve all the problems in the world. And instead, what she finds is this zany, obvious, crazy creature voiced by Aquafina, you know, and, you know, and she's vulnerable and needs to be protected. And also, you know, she's just like, um, you know, quirky and always sees the good in people. And Raya, who's such a driven warrior, is thinking this is, this is nuts. And what at the heart, though, you know, of our movie is this beautiful friendship between Raya and Sisu. And it's so rare that we get a major Hollywood movie Movie with this special female friendship at the heart of it. Um, and so the last thing uh, I would like to say about the dragon too, that that humor, it wasn't just for the sake of being funny, even though she is, you know, she's tremendously amazing and heartwarmingly funny, that there is a hidden wisdom underlying all of it, that Raya and hopefully the audience, you know, ultimately comes to see that that humor comes from a place of seeing the best in people, the best in Raya, the best in the people that Raya thought were her enemies in, you know, all these people who you think, you know, have let you down and betrayed you. The dragon is the one who can see that spark and that 
potential and it inspires everybody to sort of come together and really get past it. So, you know, uh, we did a lot, we got a lot of our inspiration from, you know, that auspiciousness and that feeling of the Eastern dragon, but truly it was like our amazing visual development team, the direction, you know, and um, of course, like Aquafina sort of bringing a game into this um, that really brought CC to life. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Thank you for those kind words. Thank you. I, I am, I've often been called the symbol of auspiciousness, so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. And I also want to add on that too. The fact that they were, that, that you made Sisu female. Was that a discussion at all? I mean, it, it felt so, it felt so right when you see Sisu come to life, but was there ever a discussion about whether or not our main dragon for Raya should be a female or a male? We made that decision really, really early on. Um, thinking about the dragon that brings water and life and means harmony and auspiciousness and, you know, the, the growth of life. It seemed natural to us to have her a female. And we we're also super excited about exploring that friendship. As Adele said, you know, we just don't get to see enough of that. So um, that was a pretty early on decision and everybody just embraced it, especially when we cast you, Wakofina. <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. And Sandra, with you playing the character of Verana and Gemma for you with Namari, what aspects of your roles do you really want audiences to take away, especially when it comes to the Southeast Asian culture, Southeast Asian cultures? You know, I'm not going to really speak about uh, regarding the Southeast Asian culture. I don't think that I really can, but I, I would say what I appreciate about Fang is that, um, and, and our characters is that it's complex. It's not, it's not, there's no black and white in these mm. characters, which I greatly appreciated. Um, and uh, <laughs> moving it slightly, just barely into a global aspect, barely, barely into global aspect. I was extremely moved by the message of this film because I feel myself struggling to learn how to trust as well. So to play a, a section of the film who seems to be an all in the antagonist or the people who are who are, are who are struggling to take power, who are who are the powerful people, um, I feel like the storytelling and the characters, particularly Gemma's character, Namari has a very nuanced and more complex look at things which is where I feel like we need to bring storytelling anyway to a more nuanced point of view. So I was really happy to be a part of that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, one of the things that really drew me to this story and, and resonated with me is the fact that, um, you know, Namari, she is kind of the, she's the antagonist, but she's not a, you know, a cut out villain. It's not black and white. Um, and I just, I find that really interesting. You, you could, and she and she and Raya are also kind of two sides of the same coin. You could imagine them having each other's upbringings and, and easily taking each other's place. So, you know, I, 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 I similarly to, to Sandra, I feel like, you know, our world is, it's complex and, and the problems of the world are only gonna start to be, begin to, began to be solved if we all work together and, and the lack of trust and the division is a, is a huge problem. But again, you know, you can also understand why certain, you know, why the people of Fang um, are trying to protect themselves. You can understand why, you know, we have elements in society that want to, you know, protect their own self, self-interest. And I think, you know, these are really complex themes to explore in a family film. And I, 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 I applaud, you know, the storytellers for, for tackling uh, this. And I think it couldn't come at a, a more kind of timely moment for where we are and, and the position we're in in the world right now. So I'm, I'm so, so happy and proud to be a part of this film. Absolutely. And just, just to say the humanity that both Gemma and Sandra brought to those roles is something that we were very, very moved by. Like the, as Gemma was mentioning, these are like very complex ideas uh, and they both connected with their characters, but also the, the philosophy of Fang and the fact that these are people who just want to protect their people and uh, they're not really villains. They're, they're just, they really passionately care about their community. And both of them really just embraced this idea and were so moved by it. And it, it really, I think, added a layer of complexity to, to our movie that was very necessary. 
Absolutely. I Thank should you. also say that I, I feel that when, when I found out that Sandra, you were voicing my mom, everything's clicked into place. I was like, that's why Namari, she's got something to, she's got so much to prove. That's why she, it all just for me fell into place. I was, yeah, so, so happy. Oh, so, so it's so good to see you. <laughs> well, I'd love to take this time now to open the floor up to our wonderful press who has been on standby and eager with questions. Thank you for submitting all these questions, guys. I'd like to first start off with Jordi from the Disney Examiner for her question, please. Hi. Hi, everybody. Good morning. And hi, Jenny. Um, thanks for having this. Um, yeah, my question was in regards to some comment that you guys had brought up before, uh, was trying to blend in South, um, e e Southeastern um, Asian cultures. But um, my question's for Kui and Adele. Um, how do you synthesize that? Like, how do you, how were you guys able to turn something so complex into something so universal? Um, I think it's important to say that Kumandra is an entirely fantasy universe. It's a, the central inspiration of Southeast Asia. And rather than doing the work of, you know, the simpler task of having one Southeast Asian country be reflected in one Kumandran land, um, the, to Disney's credit, they really, really went deeper to find the underlying inspirations and core, you know, uh, threads uh, that ran through so many of the communities. And the wonderful thing is what we all found, first of all, in all Southeast Asian countries and cultures, there's such a strong spirit of community. Um, and if you look at, you know, even one country, like the country I grew up in, Malaysia, there's so many races, cultures, religions, so many ways for us to, you know, view each other as the enemy or view each other as the other. But when you truly look at what makes our culture, you know, amazing and sings, uh, whether it's our arts or, you know, our food, the best street food in the world, it is because of all these different elements really coming together and creating something transcendent. So the filmmakers, you know, getting to that, um, you know, um, and wanting to tell the story of a divided world and seeing both sides of that aspect um, used all those inspirations, you know, to be able to tell the greater arc of the story. That and also, um, I want to say with all the details, whether it's Raya's sword, the, that wavy Chris dagger, or the Wayang Kulet, the shadow puppets used, you know, or even the arts, the batik, the fruit, all of these things, um, they were there not, uh, you know, with Kui and I, um, you know, we grew up in Southeast Asian households. Um, it was also with so many Southeast Asian, um, you know, artists, whether it's in the story team, our visual arts department, animation, people who were already there, not brought together for Raya, but that who were already being brought up by Disney. Disney, who were able to add in all these deep, uh, different details at different levels of the script, you know, things that you don't necessarily, you know, glean from a, um, a seminar or learning or reading about it, but things that you feel in your DNA. So hopefully, you know, even if you know nothing about Southeast Asia, that you're really able to feel that love and that attention, you know, at every layer of our film. Yeah, I would just add that a lot of the credit also goes to just our amazing VizDev teams and the artists, the story artists, uh, the animators, everyone who came on board to really create like the look, the feel, uh, the the landscape of of uh, Kumandra. It is a fantasy, and I always equate it to like the Arthurian legend or Dungeons and Dragons. These world, these you know Western fantasies based on like a mishmash of Western cultures. Uh, this is our chance to kind of create our you know Excalibur and our, our Arthurian legend, uh, and so. It, it was a, something to kind of celebrate uh, a culture that that Adele and I grew up in and to, to make uh, legendary heroes that our kids can aspire to. And, and just a quick ending, Kui Gwen, who is a, a martial arts expert, brought in all the amazing detailed Southeast action, like fighting style. So, dude. Oh, thanks. <laughs> he's like, he's like, nothing serious. You have weapons there in your place as we speak. Do you have? I have a screamer stick right here. I mean, <laughs> as many as one does. does. I know that. So yes, I do have one. spray. <laughs> I don't even know why. I feel like I need some lessons for you. This is amazing. All right, let's get the next question from Tatiana Hulander. Tatiana, where are you? Hello. Hi. Hi, Tatiana Hulander, Screen Rant. Um, my question is for Gemma, but a little for Kelly too. I really loved the um, equal but opposite dynamic between the two of you that Gemma spoke a little bit about. How did you approach your characters in that they're both feel very strongly that they're right and to some degree they are? Well, um, I'll jump in then. Um, yeah, I just, I, I love the fact that they have this kind of love-hate dynamic, um, but at their core, they have so much in common. Um, 
I love the fact that Namari, you know, she's got this real kind of quite aggressive exterior, but underneath it all, she's got this huge heart and she, she has this really kind of love for dragons that's been there since childhood. And I really, I, I love that first, that first scene where she locks eyes with Sisu and kind of everything just falls away and she, she, it's as if she's become a child again. Um, and I, I, I love that. And that was kind of my way into her really. Um, and again, you know, we've all had those people in our lives that we, we both love and love and you have a love hate relationship, you know, with, and, and I think it's, yes, yeah, it is such a, such a fine line. And um, yeah, I love the fact that Namari and Raya have had that connection since childhood and, and um, yeah, they're rivals, but they also, you know, they've got a lot in common. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. I think setting up these characters as kids and just seeing how authentically they connect at a young age and then cutting forward and seeing the way that they've sort of been divided. It's really, it's really incredible because just like Gemma was saying earlier, the idea that we have these two characters that could have uh, switched places at, at one point. Um, and when I really think about in my life, when things like that have happened to me, when I think about um, just how difficult it is to get out of your own biases when you're looking at someone who you see as an enemy, and then just how incredibly, by the end of the story, Raya and Namari are then suddenly willing to step outside of themselves to, they risk everything for this idea of community, this idea of, of what their relationship could have been this entire time. Um, it's really, really inspiring. It's something that I, I wanna do in my own life, but yeah, their relationship in this movie is probably one of my favorites just because of how complicated it is. And um, yeah, just a big Gemma fangirl over here, so. <laughs> oh, it's mutual, absolutely mutual. <laughs> No, I just, um, I, I should say that I, I think it, again, it kind of shows, you know, how when we're young and as children, we're not inherently, we don't hate each other. You know, it's something that is learned. It's something that comes through from, you know, whether it's a parental or family influence or from your, tr your particular tribe, you know, that those things are learned. Whereas, you know, kids, kids get, kids get on. Um, and I think that's, again, something to, to kind of take from the, from the, from the movie that, you know, those things can be learned, but they can be unlearned as well, so. Thank you ladies, that, that's such a beautiful way to depict many relationships that we can have here as adults, even now, and just being able to deconstruct some of those misunderstandings and just know at the heart that we really are humans together and want the same variations of love. Drew Hackney, you have a great question for us. Drew, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Can you hear me? Hi. Uh, yes, we can. Thanks for being awesome. here. Yes, a huge fan. Loved loved so much the movie. Um, and I have a quick question um, for Aquafina. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about your comic influences. I mean, you're so funny. You did such a great job as Sisu. And I really got, and I hope you take this as a compliment, I got a big Robin Williams as the genie vibe from your performance. Oh, and man. I would love to hear uh, more about how you found Sisu's voice. Wow, th thank you for that uh, comparison. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's very flattering. I obviously uh, was obsessed with Genie. He's one of my favorite characters from from my childhood. And I think uh, therefore maybe there was a subconscious, there, uh, subconscious thing, but I think the real beauty here um, is that, you know, when I was approached to, to play Sisu and, and hearing, you know what kind of what her vibe was uh it, it, it i i was i think i was i was given a, a chance to kind of add my own voice to it and and to simultaneously build her up with the uh with the directors who who were who were always um just more than willing to explore and play and so i think she was really born out of that process but um you know they're both definitely big and blue uh so that that's definitely a, a thing but uh those are really big big shoes to fill uh so i uh but yeah i mean uh i i think i think uh, the, the really cool thing about sisu is that uh um I, I i think she she was she was part mine too you know part, part of my voice yeah absolutely and, you know, I was also interested just to tap into Chief Benja and Raya's relationship. If I could just ask Kelly and Daniel, 
it was so close. It was so natural and close knit. And, and even the silly things like dad jokes, which I don't know if that's something, Daniel, that, that's something you added in, but what, how did you guys create that relationship and really, had you met before playing these roles? Um, Daniel, I think we met once at like an Amplify event for like a second, but we hadn't really interacted that much. It was almost like me and Aquafina who had met at an event for a couple seconds and, and now I'm, I'm getting to know them both better over Zoom. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that, gosh, Benja and Raya and their relationship is so, for me, reminiscent of my relationship with my own father. And um, I think, I think you talked about this earlier as well, just the idea that, um, just that reverence for your elders and how important family is and, and just the way that he bestows upon Raya all of these really uh, incredible ideas at such a young age. Um, gosh, yeah, that I, I cried in so many scenes with Benja. <laughs> Don and Carlos can attest to that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just, I love their relationship. And I think Daniel Day Kim also a huge fan girl of Daniel Day Kim, but uh, um, yeah, just Benja's the best. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would say two things. One, one is that I really um, give a lot of credit to um, Don and Carlos uh, and, and, and the producing team because they, the, the, the pitfall of this character could be, he could be just like a stentorian orator, you know, like the kind of politician who is the king, who, you know, is going to dictate the way everything is. But they kept pushing me to say, no, you, you have a, a really intimate, loving relationship with your daughter you know, take it down, make it more intimate. And it really triggered something different in me, you know, and, uh, and I really, it really led to finding that relationship. And, and the second thing is that, you know, I know, Kelly, we met briefly, and, you know, I'd, I'd followed what was going on with you in the news, and I knew what you were about. And all of those things were, 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 were characters, characteristics that I could relate to, and I could connect to. And so it was not just about, our roles as characters, but also knowing who you were as a person and, and, and feeling like I could connect to that personally. So um, it was a combination. And, 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 and I think it, when, I, when I saw those scenes between the two of us, I really thought that connection came through, even though we never actually were in the booth together. So um, it's a real testament to your performance. I feel you, Kelly. I, I was 15 minutes into the movie and as soon as Chief Benja threw you into the water, you know, to say I was bawling as he was turning into the <laughs> I was just like, dad, no, how could oh, you? crying, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Um, okay, and the next question from Lauren Lola, please. Where are you, Lauren? Hi. Hi, Lauren, thanks for waiting. What's your yeah. question? Um, I believe this question can be for the directors. If anyone can answer it, feel free. Um, can you talk about what was like working with the martial arts choreographer slash specialist for this film? <laughs> well, I think, I think uh, we were yeah. really fortunate uh, that he also happened to be uh, one of the writers on the show. So the Kui taken uh, away. <laughs> yeah, we leaned on we leaned on Kui quite a bit, and then uh, uh, Kui recommended Maggie, I, I believe, and. Uh, so it, we were very, you know, we very much leaned on Kui uh, for, for all things martial arts in the film. I do remember there was one day, you know, he, he did bring into the studio. How he got it past security, I don't know. But he, uh, he brought a giant bag of weapons into the studio uh, to, to, I guess, show us uh, that he was a legit uh, uh, martial arts uh, fight choreographer, which we didn't doubt. But uh, certainly after that, seeing the bag of weapons, we were... Uh, and, and, you know, uh, it, I, we probably treated him a little better after that, too. I, I think, you yeah. know, it was, might have been an intimidation move. Now that I think about it, Carlos, I think it was an intimidation move. Just, just so it doesn't become a headline, Kui, I will, I will back you up and say that these were stage weapons. Uh, so, yes, so yes. <laughs> um, but I, I know that the, the entire crew, it, it was really special for them to have Kui uh, just down the hall because they can you know the the animators the story artists the vista people could just go and knock on his door and just say like hey this is check this move out like does this make sense and then Kui would show them uh links bring them onto movies uh just do some uh in office uh demonstrations 
And to, to have that direct access to someone who's like so knowledgeable in that, the, the combat in that uh, region is, I think it was invaluable. And you really see it in the fights. They, they feel so different and so unique. Yeah, I'll just add that like uh, a lot of credit also goes to Maggie McDonald who <clears throat> choreographed all our reference fights. Um, and it was important for me to, to bring on a, a female fight choreographer and she brought in a, a female team of, of fighters to do the reference because our, our two leads uh, were Raya and Namari. I wanted to make sure that the that, that the way the a, a, a female body moves just different and, and we wanted to honor that. So it didn't feel like, you know, we were, you know, we had like some, you know, Raya doing like a move that you know the rock should be doing it should be something that was really uh it, it, it utilized you know speed strength uh agility and uh and it was just amazing to, to have like martial arts from you know southeast asia highlighted in this this way because you often see in, in movies like this uh kung fu uh or karate uh it's really nice to be able to see martial arts that that touch you know you know my culture in here but we we do think that Raya could take on the rock easily for sure Thank you, Amari could take on the rock as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I want to. Yeah. Amari wins with haircut by far for me. I actually, I was actually eyeballing it, and I was like, "Yo, that's kind of sick." I, I, I wish I had a call to do that. Oh, uh, Tanya Lamb, you've got a question. Oh, for me. Look, here we go. The undercut. Princess undercut is one of my favorite the lines undercut. in the world. Tanya Lamb, are you there? Yes, I am. Tanya, thanks for waiting for us. What's your question? So my question is for Isaac. Um, Isaac Boone, Boone brought the comedy in Raya and the Last Dragon. So how did you approach portraying him to make Boone so dang lovable? Oh, man. Um, well, you know, of course, myself, I'm very lovable. But uh, <laughs> Um, it was really fun doing him as a character because he relates to me a lot in energy wise. Uh, he feels like a very social person. If I ever met him in real life, he'd be that kind of guy who'd go up to you in a random day like, hey, do you want these cookies that I got here? Not suspicious at all. You can have them for free. And uh, he's a really cool person to act to because his I like doing his voice. It's really fun. It's like um, you have this, you have this, you don't want this high voice. You don't want this low voice. You kind of want to keep it in the middle. And then you also want that businessy part of it. So you kind of got this and then you're like, hey, I sell used cars for only $1,000. You can come take it. You can come take it at my place. And um, he's a really good per personality for me. Um, I really enjoy doing characters who have a fun, energetic, comedic energy to them. And uh, I'm really happy that I got to play Boone as myself. <laughs> we loved Boone. This film couldn't be here without him. Uh, Jacqueline Yu, you have a question for us too. Yeah, um, I was wondering, as an Asian American female, it was amazing to see this strong Asian cast as that's not something that I actually saw growing up. So how was it being able to represent the Asian community in this film and in the entertainment industry? And who is that question for Jacqueline? It could be for anyone, but I am kind of starstruck by Aquafina and Sandra O oh today. So, hello. Ladies. Sandra, come on. <laughs> well, you know what's exciting is looking at the screen. You know, it's, it's, it, that's really the, the, the most exciting thing for me because it's also, it's difficult as we've made this in, 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 the, in the COVID times and also how animation is made. You don't get to really meet everyone, all the, all the directors do. Um, I think it's, it's really seeing how animation has moved on for someone like myself, growing up in the 70s and the 80s, I didn't see anything. And I, I feel like that has been the same way uh, representation wise for a very long time. I'm actually just glad that I'm still alive to be a part, a part of, of this type of screen where you see the people who have made it. Um, so in that way, it's, it's, it's very um, exciting. It is very, very exciting. I mean, Isaac and Talia, I mean, it's just so great to see you and, and to hear what you have to say. Mostly that's, that's really what it is and to give them an opportunity to, to have their voices heard because, um, you know, especially for our, the much younger generation, 
to have a space for them to be heard. It's, it's an exhilarating change for someone like myself to be a part of and to witness. We owe it to people like you. Oh, baby. <laughs> Now, we have just a few minutes left, and I wanted to just ask this overall cast, it, it's hard to see such a beautiful celebratory film about our cultures and these communities without talking about the current times of, of what's happening, you know, and I know a lot of you have been very vocal about what's happening out there with um, injustices and in Asian American lives, elderly Asians that are being targeted. <sighs> I get emotional talking about it because I, I love the beginning of the film when Chief Benja opens up his home in hopes that all of the, all of the different lands can come together and just break bread and just understand that we're all fighting for the same thing, but we're all protecting the same thing and that we all come cut from the same cloth of principles. Um, and today, you know, coming off of 2020 with BLM and, and understanding and, and empathizing so much of what that's like for that community and now seeing that happen within our own communities, what, what do you feel when it comes to the timing of this film and what you hope audiences will take away from this and maybe how can it how can it influence what's happening today in our everyday lives and this is for anybody here i'll start I need, oh sorry well no go for it sandra please 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 um i mentioned this a, a, a earlier i was just extremely moved by the by the theme and and the the ending of the story uh, which ultimately everyone here who's, who's seen the film is about trust and how I myself am struggling with that. Um, you know, art is here to pose questions, you know, and to, um, and to potentially suggest possibility. And I think even if we start with that question to see in oneself, who do I trust? How am I not trusting? Can I trust? Can I trust that other side? Can I trust that other side when, when it seems to be very, that proof positive that this is what has been done to me? Um, but as the theme of the story, which is we cannot go on as a society, the world cannot continue, you know, without this um, open heartedness. And, and the truth that I, I think, uh, um, uh, uh, Raya learns, you know what I mean, is, is that you just, and also uh, Namari I think learns, is that you just need to keep breaking your heart again. You have to be willing to have your heart broken again and again and again, just to keep it open. Because I think that we know, um, you know, hate is not finished by hate. It, it is only won over by love. You know, so we have to each individually and then hopefully as a community and then large community, you know, a societally move towards that way because all of us are in the same boat. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful opportunity 2020 in, in all its uh, destructiveness, in all its change. Uh, if one can see it as an opportunity that somehow it has also broken all our hearts open. So what can we do with that? Thank you, Sandra, thank you. You're right, this movie is about trust and it's so, it's so crazy how many of the scenes that we saw in the, the moments of, is this an opportunity to trust? Can I trust you in the film with so many of the characters and the, and the different groups and, and um, it's exactly what's happening today and I wanna ask the directors and writers, when you came up with this film, I'm pretty sure this was far before the, the events that are happening now. So as you saw in real time, these attacks, and it was not just you know, a week of a, a trending you know, number of attacks, but then you see it, it start to compound and it wasn't just the Bay Area and now it's spreading across the US and now different communities are feuding at each other, almost exactly like what you wrote coming to life. 
on top of what already exists with the with the racism that this country still still holds what 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 did you guys think did you ever have a meeting or a a, a call to say wait hold on what's going on out here as we're writing this um I don't know if we ever had a specific meeting but it was certainly um there were certainly moments during the the making of the film where we were very aware of how this film you know which it was meant to be timeless was unbelievably timely and um you know i think it emboldened us to continue forward because we felt like we had something to say and if if you know this film can just have you know get get you know teach one person to be brave enough to trust somebody then we feel like we've we've done what we set out to do yeah i don't i i was gonna say i, I don't think we had any idea uh of what would become what how the world would become by the time this movie would come out especially when it comes to like the injustices to the asian american community right now and uh and i, I guess i'll just be frank like you know there's been there's been some time where the, in the last, you know, 365 days where there's been a lot of negative uh, imagery and, and, and words said about Asians. And so it's hard not to, to appreciate that this movie's coming out and, and kind of giving a counterpoint and, and just telling a positive story that, that um, you know, uh, gives a, a positive spin to, uh, or not just a positive spin, but just celebrating uh, Asian American skin, Asian American lives, Asian American uh, people. Because uh, I think that if you only see, uh, and I think this is with any uh, a group that's underrepresented, if you only see stories where you're seen as uh, the bad guy or a thug or what have you, uh, it, it starts to paint a very negative picture of you for, for those who don't ever get to know you, who never get to be in the room with you. And so I think step one is representation and, and really being out there, not just... Um, you know, both behind the camera, the stories we tell, um, and then just being out there. So we, we realize, so we can acknowledge that this world is all of us, not just any one of us. Because uh, without that, I, I, I don't know how we get better. So I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative and grateful that this movie's coming out when it is. Can I just add something to that also? I, I think we can't undervalue the power of the fact that this is an actual, this is a Disney movie. And the people that will be watching this movie by and large are families. Uh, parents with their children seeing this kind of representation and understanding what is possible. And Sandra so rightly po pointed out that people like Isaac and Talia, are, they have the space to perform in these kinds of projects for maybe the first time in history to this degree. But at the same time, I'm also thinking about all the children who will be seeing Raya for the first time and seeing uh, an Asian an Asian strong female who kicks ass and becomes uh, a queen. You know, she's, she's, on, she's on the path to becoming a ruler and she's being groomed by her father to do that in a loving relationship. All of these things are such a positive portrayal. And, and as Cleo was saying, you know, it's, it's exposure that brings understanding and that understanding is what changes perception. What this movie does on the scale of those things cannot be underestimated. Yeah, I, I would just say that uh, the, the most powerful thing that I think film can accomplish is it can let, it can give someone an opportunity to experience life through someone else's eyes. Someone who you, give you a perspective that you wouldn't have. Uh, and, and Raya does that in a way that it's very optimistic, very hopeful. And through it, you know, we got to learn about cultures that were not our own people that were not our own problems that were not our own and and it, it really it brought us together in a beautiful way and I, I think that if if we're able to bring a little bit of that light and a little bit of that empathy to people um I, I I think we would we're just feeling so proud of this movie this group of people that we're working with the time when it's coming out it's uh I, we feel like we're adding something really valuable to a really important conversation. And if you don't mind, Benny, uh, me calling you out, you said something to us a second ago before joining the conference about your uh, your uh, child and when, when you watched the movie together, I think really warmed our heart. If you wouldn't mind that sharing when you watched the movie uh, mm. with him a little bit ago. Well, um, 
Yeah, um, yeah, it was the first time he'd actually sat uh, and watched the film entirely uh, all the way through. And obviously the themes about being trusted, um, you know, he turned around and gave me a big hug and said, I trust you, Jesse, <laughs> you know. You mean, uh, and, uh, and um, uh, uh, again, uh, as, as we've said in the room, this is it. We, 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 we need this to you, unite, you know? Um, and as Gemma, uh, uh, and Gemma uh, rightly said, it's uh, about, about kids when they look at each other and the innocence is there. They see through color and, and, and things need to be unlearned. And as Queer said, you know, I think especially in America and, and <clears throat> ripples all over the world, we uh, we are living through the sort of remnants of this kind of hate that has kind of uh, permeated through the world. And it's, again, very timely with a beautiful film showing us that can love, that can really lead the way. Uh, I just wanted to add one last thing to circle back to what Sandra uh, brought up, which is very important to emphasize, which is Kumandra is an entirely fantastical fictional land, but it was very important to the filmmakers that the troubles that that land faces and the journey that Raya goes on, the struggle she faces are rooted very much in the real world. The problems that we're facing in terms of division, but it was particularly important that the way Raya goes about trying to solve this is also reflected in reality. It is not an easy thing. It is not just a, a you know an easy by word that we're just gonna say the word trust and you know magically hope it comes together. Mm -hmm. That it is something you keep doing even though you lose everything that's important to you, even though you're betrayed, even though you know your heart is broken, that we have to keep reaching out because it is the only way we are going to be able to move forward in this world together. And particularly, you know, with everything that's been happening in this last year, the violence towards Asian Americans, seeing each other as the other. Um, you know, words have power and words have the power to, you know, paint people in a different light. They have the power to bring us together. So hopefully, you know, this movie is our word, you know, and our message to the world of, you know, put, let's, let's pull together. Yeah, Adele, I, something you said really resonated with me and, and the idea that you wanted to address these issues in a way that felt real. There's a, there's a moment for me specifically um, with Raya, when she just towards the end of the movie gets to feel justifiably and absolutely unapologetically angry. And for me, seeing a young woman in a movie like this, just get to feel that righteous anger and then recognizing that the thing that pulls her out of it is seeing her friends and, and how they're helping other people. And it just, feels so real to me because I think all of us, you know, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I can say all of us uh, seeing these um, sort of attacks happening over and over and over consistently, like you do get to that place sometimes where you feel like, oh, this is a, this is a very broken world. And I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a lot of things right now and recognizing for me, gosh, that moment felt so grounded in reality because it, like you said, Adele, you can't just say like trust unity, like, yay, it's going to be fine. Acknowledging that there's a lot of pain that happens there and recognizing that, like you said, the only way to really get through it is to look for the bits of hope in your community. And, and I see so much hope on this call with all of these people that I, I look up to so much, you know, Sandra and, and, and Aquafina and, and Gemma, and I'm enlisting everybody, but I think everyone on this call is um, doing impossible things in a world that told us we couldn't. Um, so to be part of that, to be making a movie with all of you guys about that same thing, with these characters who are also trying to fight for a world that feels impossible and hopeless sometimes, what a cause. Um, yeah, I'm really grateful for this. I think that's so beautifully put, Kelly. I just, I wanted to add one thing, which is that, you know, you talking about, you know, everything that's going on at the moment, and it, it is easy to feel overwhelmed with, with hopelessness and anger, but, you know, as it has been said, you know, where I get my hope from is that you, if you look out, if you look for the helpers and there are helpers, there are people that have been doing, and I just want to shout out all the grassroots organizations and individuals that have been doing the hard work on the ground for a long time and maybe not getting, you know, the airtime or um, the attention that they should. And this is now, it feels like there is this, this moment to really, you know, 
spotlight their work because they're already doing that. They're already building these kind of cross community alliances that 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 we we need. And I just you know I feel so grateful that they are there doing the hard work on the ground and you know we've all got our part to play so us as storytellers we put out our, 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 our film which I hope has a message that resonates and then we also have you know amazing people within our communities who are doing that work um, day to day so I just want to shout them out um, yeah yeah you're so right about that Gemma and not only everybody here that took part in this film to tell the story, but every person here that was waiting in queue with our press, we wouldn't be able to get this story out to everybody if it weren't for you patiently waiting and making sure to share the story. One thing that has been said over and over in the past few weeks is that Asian American violence doesn't make mainstream news. But what I can count on here is everybody here will make sure to get this message of watching this film to every community out there and to understand that this is no, this film is a necessary message in the these times and you guys have the power to spread that message for us. So thank you for using this film as a way for all of us to break bread and to make sure all the communities understand that we do trust and love one another. I just want to thank everybody so much for taking the time to be here today and to let you know that Raya and the Last Dragon is in theaters and on Disney Plus with premiere access March 5th. Make sure everybody's out there watching it and do stay safe. We, we I do appreciate being here with you guys. This is an honor for me. So thank you. Thank you so much. Bye Jeannie. Bye, guys. See you. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. So bye. great to see you. Bye. Bye, guys. Yeah. <laughs>